I can I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, good. <laughs> Thank you for confirming. <laughs> good. And I think we got Jennifer in there. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right. So this is for us to practice. You just I guess sure we've got our. Yeah. We got to get the polls and the just be made co-host, oh, which right. okay. Jennifer so is going happening. to do for us. Okay. Good. Yeah. I was going to set my timer too. <laughs> You've changed. I have, yes. Yeah. Just for a few minutes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then I'll go back to my pajamas. I'm no, just kidding. <laughs> for, How like many it. participants do we have right now? <laughs> no, I like that we're already recording, but I still have slippers no on. So. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, it's fine. I didn't realize we were recording. Whoops. I think oh, they I'm auto. We do too. Okay. okay. <laughs> COVID, right. professional on top. I just did a two-minute meditation to just. Oh, there you go. I know. I like eleven oh five. I'm like, okay, yep. I'm gonna. It's so much easier presenting in person. I think it's just you're presenting. Oh, you mean like, like with the, yeah, not behind yeah. the screen, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's easier. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'm not sure what I like best. Yeah. <laughs> All yeah. right, I'm just gonna put my timer on here. There we go. But maybe I'll just mute myself because we're being recorded. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's okay. They'll trim us. All right. So we got 10 minutes. Um, I think I had a question for you. Okay. Right. Again. No, it's all good, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say. Um, when we do the breakout rooms, I guess you'll be jumping from one one room to another, yeah? Mm -hmm. A few minutes here and there, yeah? Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, people are joining, which is lovely. Yeah. We still need to be made co-hosts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, okay. So right now, well, I'm not, yeah. So we're, we're not seeing the poll questions at the moment yet, right? No, I think Jennifer will do it. She's probably just, um, yeah moving between things or playing um having multiple jobs at once so yep 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 yeah but we still have a lot of time we're still 10 minutes early yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, hello everyone we'll be starting in 10 minutes <laughs> yeah all right um I'm not too good at small talk <laughs> well so, so you could talk about COVID. I'm saturated. Well, I'm I was, I was, though. I was <laughs> say, your school got the letter from yeah. your board that you yeah. all can be vaccinated within the next few days. Yeah. And is it happening at one of the major clinics or like a pharmacy or? It's at, you know, I did it this morning and where is it again? I need to check my, I've just, I booked it and um, where is it again? My screenshots. Anyway, it doesn't matter. That's but that's exciting. Know, that's like it's great to hear. Yeah, it's exciting. I know. Um, yeah, the Agrec Agrec Center. Okay, because last time cows. I heard the <laughs> you're definitely from Abbotsford. When you say <laughs> we're surrounded by farmers here <laughs> in the um, farming community. <laughs> yeah. Um, like it. We don't want to have this on YouTube, do we? That's no, fine. Just kidding. They're sourcing. Um, because last time I heard it was like Vancouver Coastal, like their whole um health authority, all their school like districts within the school, but I hadn't heard anything about more schools within Fraser Health. So it's great that it's actually happening yeah. like outside yeah. of Surrey School District. Um mm. being part of VHA, like our numbers have been the lowest for the most part. I right, so would imagine that we're gonna be pretty low. Right um as like you just yeah. look at our numbers and it's not comparable. So it doesn't make sense to, um, yeah. I even saw something like the AstraZeneca that's coming for the 40 to 65 range now, like yeah, the okay. Island yeah. has been getting less just because they, um, the need isn't, yeah, the same. Yeah, sure. No, but, that's right. That's right. You don't have as many numbers. Yeah. I'm just, let me just go into my settings here because it's, one sec. we're starting in what, five minutes? Oh, we so eight, eight minutes. minutes. Okay, oh, we're we good. Time. Actually, I'm just going to change my display settings here. Um, I'm 
liking to see all these people coming in early. It's nice. I'm know, sure they're good. Um, I'm they're sure motivated. Many, yeah, I'm sure many will be signing in and maybe going to get a break. The breaks aren't very big today. Like lunch was like 15 minutes. Oh, is it? Oh, I, I've barely had time to look at my schedule. <laughs> I've already had a second. I just break. after this, I'll have more time to think. Yeah. <laughs> I, I already had a second breakfast. I eat a lot these days. So. <laughs> yeah, you got a second creature to feed. Well, parasite, my doctor called it. So you're what? Right. My doctor called it a parasite the other day. <laughs> oh, <a> parasite. <laughs> I think I'm borderline. I'm borderline now, so I need to, um, which is normal, but um she was like yeah you have a parasite stealing everything good out of you so i'm like oh okay makes sense <laughs> a kind little parasite that's why i eat uh, everything yeah yeah hi, hi jennifer. I'm jennifer i'm the moderator for this jennifer. session sorry i was just taking my dogs out and grabbing a tea oh, totally fine we figured good we, i was just saying the, the beach. breaks in between aren't very big so you gotta like use the time in between wisely yeah yeah mm -hmm. So yeah, so we have 45 minutes, I guess. Okay. Yeah. And so we got the poll questions coming up. Are, are you seeing them, uh, Amanda? No. I'm not. I think okay. Jennifer just needs to make you and I co-host still. Okay. Right. Okay. On it. Thank you. Co-host and make co-host. There we go. Okay. Oh, good. Oh, nice. Okay. Got all those functions there. All the power okay. now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay that's good launch polling okay that's easy and then okay excellent so that's for later and then i'm going to so everyone knows i'm going to share the um google doc that so if anybody wants to add notes or Perfect. questions or anything to it they can feel free mm -hmm. yeah i added some the links link. already to the slide yeah. to our padlet yeah do you know with zoom i know with like we use microsoft teams um if they haven't joined the conversation yet they can't see previous comments so it might be wise to like start like share that again right at yeah. 11 30. Oh, is that right? Okay. I don't think people can see right. things if they're they not in the session. The list. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, great. It's I'll great to share now, anyways, but yeah, like lots of staff meetings where people are like, I don't see it because they join. Yeah, late. that's right. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. Good point. All the things you got to learn now when you're doing all of this. Yep. <laughs> And like yeah, little by little. <laughs> and there's so many different ones you can use, whether it be like Hangouts or Meet Teams or Zoom or Skype or whatever. So Zoom is still my favorite so far, just in terms of ease of use. Mm -hmm. um, but and we have Teams. Our district is, uh, has three six five, but and I haven't used it that often, so I probably would get more comfortable with it if I used it more. But yeah, yeah, um, Google maybe the go to. Yeah, we use Teams in our district and like it's, I find it's pretty easy and I just love that it's like incorporated in my Outlook. So it's yeah, like, yeah, that is like nice. stuff like that just makes it so easy to. Where uh, are you? What district are you in? I'm in the, I'm in the Soup School District. So Soup? 62, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm in Comox Valley. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which one? And you use Zoom there? Um. Well, we seem to, even though we do have teams, but for some okay. reason, Zoom still seems to be kind of the go-to that people are using. We're starting to have more meetings on teams because our district is an Office 365 district. Yeah. But um, for whatever reason, people were just comfortable with Zoom because we've used it before. So, yeah. but I'm slowly seeing more meetings getting called in teams instead of Zoom. Yeah, I think our district, it was like a wide, like, anything that was like school related has always been through teams since the start of this. Um, we just started with uh, office like two years ago, maybe. Oh, okay. Maybe it's been yeah. a bit longer than that, but it hasn't been that long. So yeah, we're still figuring it out. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Well, and you, you start something two years ago and then a year ago, everything got twisted and turned upside down. And just, yeah, it sure did. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah. Are we able to see how many participants we have there, Amanda? I'm seeing the gallery yeah. view, but so at the bottom, just for the breakout rooms. I'm seeing 18. 
Yeah, so at the bottom floor. Oh, yeah, like 18. Okay, hole. I see it. It'll yeah, give you a total little number there. Okay, that's good. We still have a few more minutes. And yeah. last time I checked, we had over 80 people registered, but I doubt oh, wow. everyone's oh, okay. going to attend just because I know people often sign up for more than one thing or surf. Yeah. get hungry. <laughs> um, yeah, I checked, I think, like an hour ago and it hit, hit like 80. Okay, so but, we might be planning wow. for 12 rooms or something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'll let you share the slides and Amanda when we get started. Yeah, I'll in a yeah, couple I'll, of minutes. I'll, yeah. Oh wait, we still got a few minutes still. Yeah, let's just wait a little bit because uh, just do some numbers nice are going check. up. But um, yeah, no. Um, so you're at Nides then, Jennifer, or maybe not, but yeah. That's right. Yeah. I wonder did Don and did Don Anderson move to that school? Don Anderson? Yeah. That name sounds familiar. You know what? We grew so much this year. I don't even okay. know all the people that work at my school anymore. Yeah. yeah. Plus I've been working from home all year because just because of our space. We're in an old elementary school called Solom School. We moved in there 15 years ago or 10 years ago, something like that. Anyway. Yeah. Because it was closed and um Oh, see, my internet's being dodgy again. I'm going to stop my video. Okay. No one needs to see my weird faces when the <laughs> video freezes. Um, yeah, so we grew, I think they hired like 35 more teachers wow. this year. Yeah, it's been nuts. Is that to cover the remote learning for like yeah. K to 8 or yeah. whatever? Especially yeah, K to 9. We, have, okay. we went from like three or 400 FTE to like 1500 FTE, K to 9. So yeah, they had, they had to hire a bunch of new teachers. And then of course that means you got to put the teacher somewhere. So those of us that mm -hmm. had worked there for a long time, were told we could work from home just to make space for, and yeah. so it wasn't too crowded in our school. So I've yeah. been working from home all year. So I get emails cause I do tech support. I'll get an email from, from a teacher. And I'm like, I have no idea who you are, what you teach, where you work. <laughs> it's kind of well, weird. Actually. And I find that's like the, that's like with our school, you're, when you're like the one DL school, you sometimes have all these like individualized programs that like randomly run through it as well. So then you get yes. these contacts from these teachers that, yeah, it's just like all these small yeah. programs that all work to build a new school. But yeah, our remote learning. So the new staff we have remote learning for our district was actually put in like one of the major multi-purpose rooms in one of our high schools. So they oh, just okay. over that whole space for the year. Right. Um, which is great for some reason, but I've heard lots of having a lot of teachers in a big multi-purpose room all teaching online at the same time. It's quite oh, loud. It's so <laughs> noisy. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, when they, they're doing their SLP meetings at the beginning, because it was the beginning of October that I got told I could go home, but I had been listening because I'm secondary. I don't do SLP meetings mm -hmm. over the phone, but I'm listening. There's like five other teachers in my room and all of them are talking to the, their families at the same time. And I was like, ah, I just have my headphones on all the time and yeah. listen to the radio and try to yeah. tune it out. But yeah, it got a little nutty in there. That's for sure. <laughs> so well, it's 1131. So yeah. I will hand it over to you guys and um, you can go ahead. Oh, and I'll put that the link to that document the shared document that if anybody has any questions or comments or whatever, they can place on the shared document and I'll put it in the chat right now. Thank Take you. Over right. to you guys. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen real quick. And then I guess we'll get started on. Huh? We can get started. Exactly. <laughs> or... Okay. Here we go. All right, well, welcome everyone to our session on sharing effective practices to enhance student engagement in digital or distributed learning. Amanda and myself are going to share some of our experience as DL teachers, but really what we want to do is get you all to participate in this session and uh, share your experiences, your strategies, etc., so that we can all inspire each other to become even better DL teachers. So who are we? I'll just start with myself briefly. I'm the French and Spanish teacher at Abbotsford Virtual School. I've learned a lot from working with uh, my colleagues there. And I'm a strong believer in PD sessions. I'll keep it short. And uh, Amanda, go ahead. 
Yeah. So I'm Amanda Dunn. Nice to meet you all. Um, I've been working at JDFDL or West Shore Center in the Stoop School District for about six years now. Um, I'm currently expecting my first uh, human child. I do have a fur baby. My dog, Kenzie, is my firstborn. And if anyone here is from my school, they can probably vouch for how obsessed I am with my dog. Um, and then I'm a recent grad of the Royal Roads University Mallet program. And I did my final research in um, the impact of self-efficacy by implementing a certain framework called a community of inquiry. So when I first started my program, I didn't really know what a community of inquiry was. So I just wanted to introduce that real quick. So it's a theoretical framework on which you build your online classrooms around, and it focuses on three different independent elements, which is teaching, social, and cognitive presence. And when those are all combined, you're able to create a meaningful educational experience. At the end of the day with my own research, I wasn't able to fully recommend the full implication of a COI within my framework. And that's just because of the uniqueness of my DL classroom. But um, I did come up with four main recommendations, much which will be um, implemented and talked about today, hopefully. So now that we've introduced ourselves a little bit, we'd love to do a quick poll just to know who you all are. So I think Florence is gonna put that up for me. Am I? <laughs> or can you do that? Yeah, no, that's good. I'm launching it. Go ahead. That's fine. Yeah. All right. Maybe just like, yeah, if you want to okay. answer where you fall. All right. So what is your current role in DL? And we're seeing the numbers. Mm -hmm. Mostly teachers. Yeah, we got lots of teachers. No counselors so far. A few administrators and a few others. Okay. <clears throat> okay, that's great. Thank you very much. And then we have a second question coming up. So we've got mostly teachers. So that's, that helps, I guess. That's good. And so I'll end the polling here. And then, oops. Okay, and I meant to do the second one. Polling two. Here we go. All right. So second question, what do you hope to take away from this session? We are planning to discuss the first three points, but we would like to know what your main interest is in. Okay, we're seeing a lot of all of the above, just surfing the conference sessions, totally fine, we've been there. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> all right, so mostly all of the above and then a lot of uh, course delivery strategies, which we do plan on going yeah. into. Perfect, so I'll end the polling there. Thank you for all your answers, that's yeah. great. That gives us a, a nice insight. Good. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll let you continue, Amanda. Perfect. Um, just move that over. Okay. So just to give a quick rundown of what we plan to discuss today. So our topic is going to be broken up into three sections. We have course introductions, engaging course content and activities, and then social emotional aspects of DL. Some of our session guidelines is we hope this is to be, we hope this to be an open-ended and collaborative discussions. And we hope you all participate in different ways. So we're gonna have uh, the comment box or chat box within Zoom is open. Both Florence and I will try our best to moderate it as we're going. We're gonna have some group discussions and breakout rooms after we complete each section. And then finally, um, after each one of those, we're gonna have a Padlet for each section that Within your group room, you can just select one person and they can add it to the Padlet so that you can see what other people discussed as well. Um, and the nice thing with Padlet is you will have access to it afterwards. So if you don't have time right away to see what other people are discussing or there was a really cool idea, it will be there and that'll be shared. Um, the link is shared within the document at the beginning already and you'll have access to that as well. Okay, so part one starting off is introductions. So for introductions of the course, that's one of my main recommendations of my research was improving or enhancing the introductions. And that could include um, adding a welcome survey, a way to get to know your students within the first assignment for asynchronous self-paced courses, which is what I teach in an individualized schedule, as well as creating multiple welcome videos or introduction videos. And if you just do have one using timestamps. So to kind of jump into what schedules are, um, both Florence and I have schedules built into our courses. And just so all of you know too, Florence and I just met, I think like three or four weeks ago, we were kind of put okay. together uh, with similar topics. So it's quite interesting collaborating with her because like with all of our DL schools, we all have similarities and yet they all are so drastically different. So both of us use schedules within our courses, but 
they're done a little bit differently. So Florence, do you want to explain how yours is done? Sure. So at our school at AVS, we have a tech expert who's uh, done that for us. And in all the secondary level courses, um, at the beginning of the course, there is a link to a Google form for um, students to go to and they enter their email address, their start date and their planned date of com course completion. And then that Google form is magically linked to uh, through some coding that Craig has done for, uh, for everyone um, to a spreadsheet that all the teachers have entered the assignment weights to each of their courses. So that way that generates um, an individualized schedule uh, schedule for course schedule for students that they get in their email so that's been really good because then that way it just gives them a you know a chance like for example let's say unit one is a bit heavier then they can spend more time on it so it gives them a, a schedule um, for the middle school um, grades we started a new system last year because we wanted to really streamline communication with students and parents so now what we have is um, shared google docs that all the teachers of one grade level enter their um, weekly assignment due dates to. That way, we don't have to all have separate documents, separate sheets, and that it's all together and all sort of centralized. So that's been helpful. And then within my own context, we actually didn't have any type of scheduling until last year, and it was actually something that I created using Excel. So for the teachers who wanted, and it was a majority of the teachers at the time, um, I sat down with them one-on-one -on -one and we created an Excel document that weighted their course, how they see fit. And then um, used a, we used Moodle. So we used a survey at the beginning of the course to help facilitate and figure out when they choose to be done. So for mine, I use a welcome survey, like I said, and some of the questions I ask the students, and this is before they're able to start my course, is like what their preferred email is. I don't know about you, but a lot of students give like the wrong email or a different email they don't check or their parents' email. So I get a preferred email, which is really nice. Um, I get their preferred name and pronouns. I also give them my preferred name and pronouns so they know how I would prefer them to um, approach me when we're communicating. I have a multiple choice question on the owls of which I'm available for help so they know right off the bat. And I ask a specific date for when they choose to finish the course. So we are able to give them the full year to complete the course. Some students use that year, some people don't. So I create the schedule based on that question of when they started the survey, the day they submitted it, and then the day they give me that. And then all I do is I go into Excel, I type in their name, I type in those two answers into the columns, and then it makes me another sheet that looks similar to the picture that you have here. This is an example that I made with our math teacher last year. And obviously it's not the full one, but this would be a PDF that we would then email to the students. Unlike Florence, it's the teacher who's doing, at my school, it's the teacher who's doing it, and it's the teach, teacher who's emailing the students. So it's a little bit more work on that end, but I quite like it because it gives me the opportunity to email the student right away once they're starting, which is quite nice because even though they may have registered, it doesn't mean they're starting right away. We have students who register and then they're like, oh, I'm going to start like in a month or two or I signed up for four courses and I'm going to do two and two. So this is nice to know they're actually going to start when they do the survey. Um, and it's just another way for me to reaffirm some of my best practices or, or like next semester, exactly. <laughs> um, some of the best practices I have in my class, or for instance, I had a whole bunch register before spring break. And I was like, great to have you here. I'm going on vacation for two weeks. I don't expect me to be monitoring my email too much. Um, so that's nice. And then welcome videos. So with welcome videos, most of our courses I feel like have some sort of videos, but within my own research, it was really important that teachers present their authentic self. And in doing so, you wanna make sure that your videos are tailored to not only your course, but who you are as a teacher. And then another part is a lot of times videos can be full of information. So if you have a 10 minute video that's walking through all the different aspects of your course, and we're talking assessment or the navigation or different um, tools that they should be using. You can split those up into different videos, or you could look at adding timestamps to your videos. Um, this just makes it easier. So when students want to go back and review something, they know exactly which video to access or which timestamp to go to, instead of having to scan through the whole video again and missing it. It just makes it a little bit easier for their own navigation. Okay. And then this actually brings us to our first Padlet and breakout room. 
So I think Florence is gonna share the link to the Padlet in the chat if you didn't have it open already. It was in our description as well, so some of you may have gone to it. And if you don't know what Padlet is, I'm just gonna quickly show, um, Florence, can you just give me a nod that you're still seeing my the Padlet now? We're seeing the Padlet and Perfect. the link to the Padlet is in the chat box. Lovely, thank you. So with Padlet, if you've never used it before, you're able to use it without signing in or an account. The only thing is, is when you make your comment, it'll be anonymous. If you do wanna sign in, they're free. And like I used it a ton in my masters. It was a really nice collaborative tool. Um, and all you need to do is answer the first question here, but we're actually not gonna ask you to answer it now. We're gonna send you into a breakout room and we're gonna give you about five minutes within that breakout room to discuss uh, the question we're asking, which is what are your ideas or best practices for introductions um, and making sure you're getting off to a good start within your own classes. So Florence, wanna send okay. them off? I'll open the room. So we've Perfect. got, uh, I think eight rooms. So we've got six to seven participants in each room. And then while um, you are all in the rooms to discuss that uh, Padlet number one topic, I will also curate, or we'll also curate the chat box and then uh, get back to you. And then we'll be surfing the breakout rooms. So I'll open them now and you'll automatically be assigned to one of the rooms. Okay, I'm just gonna <clears throat> stop sharing for a moment and we should see everyone disappear. Perfect. Okay, so. I guess I just go and join a room because I'm a host, right? Oh yeah, it, it didn't, it gave me an option, but if it didn't give you an option, just, yeah. So. Okay, I, yeah, I can see the option to join. So I'll just go yeah. join one. Yeah. And then some have chosen not to join most like, oh no, they're still going. I've just assigned people had, had hadn't joined yet to some of the rooms. So I think yeah. everyone's in a room now. Yeah, okay. Right? Um, yeah, yeah there, it looks like there might be they're either going or they've chosen, like you assigned me a room and I said I didn't want to go. So. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, it's not. I wasn't me. even looking at the thing. <laughs> okay, that's good. Um, I'm going to go look at the chat now. Yeah. That's what I'm So then I guess self-basing is something we can talk about, right, Amanda? Yeah. Send that directly to David, but he's not in this room, so I'll... Okay, I'm gonna join some rooms here. Yeah. Are you doing that too? Okay. Yeah, which ones are you gonna go to? I'll go to, oh, why don't we split them up and how many do we have in total? We got eight, I'll, I'll go to four. One or five. Four. I'll go to five. Well, why don't you do one through four? Or so you'll do five through eight and I'll do yeah. one. Okay. Yeah, is that okay? Yeah. You'll okay. do the second half. Okay. Five to eight. That's right. Okay.
I should have had the Muppet song intro, like ready to go for this. You're right. Okay, I think we are all back now or pretty close to, which is lovely. So I'm going to share my screen again. Um, perfect. So now that we've uh, discussed part one, we're going to move into part two. We will come back at the very end to do a little bit bigger of a discussion with everyone. Um, we just found with the numbers of this amount of people, it's nicer to have the smaller breakout rooms to actually have discussions where people can, everyone can participate. So part two, we're now looking at enhancing our DL course activities. So what are different things that we can do to enhance our DL activities? So popular platforms and tools within DL that Florence and I have used, engaging DL activities that can be incorporated, and then also just providing opportunities for student feedback. And then actually, I think Florence is taking over now. I don't see her though. Florence, are you muted? Uh -oh. Florence, you're muted. Better? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> I just I, I automatically got muted there. Okay. Uh, so, popular platforms and tools that I have used, uh, or mo most of those here in my courses, in my language courses. Um, for my middle school classes, I have a blended learning component. So I do Google Meets with them on a weekly basis. And with those students, grades six to nines for French, uh, grades six to eights for Spanish, I use um, Kahoot regularly for review and they've always enjoyed that a lot. I also use the Jamboard in parallel with my Google Slides uh, for them to maybe describe pictures or do some team activities they can have have little post-its with like um, category games and that kind of thing. So that's been nice and interactive. In the middle there are the more the, uh, uh, the platforms that I've used or that I suggest to students to use for, uh, for example, to create a presentation or a story, et cetera. So like um, in addition to Google Slides might be like Adobe, Adobe um, Spark Post storyboard that, that we just got a subscription for as really students have really enjoyed that because they can include visuals like in their comics activities, for example, really easily. I also use uh, Quizlets for them to create digital flashcards if they don't want to do them on on cardboard, for example, for and uh, and then Luma. I know other people like to use Screencastify or other tools, but just to create my own video um, teacher videos. So then, um, and then you can maybe discuss some more platforms and tools later on in the next breakout room. Uh, then on to some engaging DL activities. So I found I found in the last few years that with my um, feedback from students, many of them have commented on the fact that they like having a choice. And I almost always give them a choice, whether it's in, a in, in terms of the assignment format and the kind of, you know, the kind of platform they can use, or in terms of the content. So let's say we're um, doing the discussion forum or a presentation or whatever on, let's say, um, music, sports, um, foods, you know, things are cultural um, activities, et cetera. They, they can choose something that they're interested in. So they like having that choice. And um, in terms of activities that I found um, engaging for my students are the virtual reality activities. So I've linked here, you'll have access to those slides. Um, tourism, so they can um, have access to those uh, 3D tours of like castles and museums, and they can you know have discussions on those. They like that. I know in science they have some labs that they can watch on YouTube with those uh, little 3D goggles. Uh, also community engagement. So depending on the subject you're teaching, it might be uh, you know different types of people related to that field. But for myself, I have them interview a French or a Spanish speaking immigrant, and there's quite a few of them around. And if not, I you know provide my own. Uh, uh, um, uh, contact and they have like cultural questions or and then also ask some they get to practice a little bit of their French and or Spanish so that's nice because they get to talk to someone outside the course and having guest speakers interactive discussion forums of course like having them reply to each other 
And then there's also H5P activities and adaptive quizzes, which I'm not using, but Amanda is. So if you have questions about those, um, Amanda will be happy to answer your questions towards the end of the other session. And I've already talked a little bit about the video conferencing activities with the Cahoots and Jamboard. So that's for me and now, Amanda, go ahead. Perfect, thank you. So yeah, the last topic we wanted to bring up with this one was just provide opportunities for student feedback. Um, so that's creating and regularly updating an FAQ if you notice that one student's asking you a question, even though you feel like your instructions or the way it's laid out may have been clear, um, maybe just incorporating that into an FAQ if one student's asking, probably multiple are thinking it. Um, providing multiple opportunities for students to give feedback and share experiences. Um, so not just at like one or at the end of the course, but actually giving them the options as they go throughout the course. And Florence has shared a link to a Google form here that she uses in her class. And then lastly, um, you teaching the students how to actually give feedback is I think pretty important. Um, even with like asking good questions or giving feedback, they probably don't know how to give good feedback. At least a lot of my students don't know how to give good feedback. So at the beginning, giving it more of a scaffolded or approach or um, more guided questions. And then as you go further throughout your course, they can be a little bit more open in how they give the feedback since they have some experience with it. Okay. And then, so now this one was just real quick because I feel like all of us are experts within our own classes and we all have so much experience within ourselves that we really wanted to tap into the expertise that we have in the room with us. So we're going to go again back to the breakout room. Um, we'll send you back. We're looking for about another uh, five minutes tops probably. And then we're just looking for you to answer what are your ideas or best practices for things you have adjusted within your own courses or added to help engage students more. Um, again, please pick one person to add uh, your responses or a quick summary to the Padlet when you're done. And I'm going to go ahead and open the rooms now. So we should be going and you're there Amanda I forgot to put the time limit on the first one. Totally okay. People were chatting the, well, few I went anyway, into. Anyway, it's all good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Anyway, I guess um, we'll, we'll curate the chat later. Maybe yeah, I'll just end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'll go, we'll do the same. I'll go to five. Yeah. Actually, I, I'll start with seven. I didn't go to seven. I didn't even actually get through all of them. And then. Yeah, I didn't either. Um, yeah. okay. So I, I actually wasn't going to, I feel like sometimes at least the ones I went in, it was almost like they saw me and were like, so. <laughs> I felt that same, same way with uh, the first one. I, I may just let them do their thing and watch the Padlet and make sure that. Um, yeah. Let and them, leave them and then just look okay. at the time because. Uh, we're doing okay. We're, we're doing, doing okay. Time so well, far. Yeah. Because we have another 15 minutes, right? Yeah. Yeah. We yeah, should be good. So, yeah. Okay. I'll look at the chat then. And we'll have to ask Randy to maybe trim out those breakout rooms because we don't want to have that in, right? Those long breaks in the in a so we should really take them out. Yeah. Of I, the video. You know, so I don't know how he wants to do it, but yeah, I don't know how that gets um Yeah. So that would be way too long in the video. Sharing for a minute so I can see everyone coming in.
That's so funny that you linked to the Muppet show that you mentioned. <laughs> this, this one person had the so, YouTube link to the yeah. Muppet show. Did you see that? Yeah, no, she um, she funny. had mentioned it. And then right, right, right. I was like, oh, yeah. Like, okay. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> um, All right. Are we timing this? How much uh, there's about do we two have? minutes left. OK, that's good. Yeah, so I'll, I, it was just around 12. I'll let the time go to 12.05, and then I'll say a minute. And then when you just press close all rooms, that gave the minute warning, right? It did. It Perfect. did, yeah. So, okay. yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then after that, it's me, I guess. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and then with you, a little bit on 20, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Is it 20 or no, it's actually 19. I, 19, the communication strategies. I have it written which one it is. Okay. Yeah. We'll get, whoops. That's, um, I'll go quickly over 21, or 20, sorry. Oh, which one am I? Oh yeah, the communication strategies. I don't, we can, if you want, I can talk more on those two yeah, points, I, but yeah. I can, I can just say it if you want, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Are you closing the rooms? I or? will send the message right now. Okay, perfect. Or I, I don't even, I can just press the close the rooms and I think it just gives 60 That's seconds. Yeah, yeah, excellent. So they were in the same groups, right? It looks like we're all coming back now. Um, I know that one was a little quicker, so hopefully you were still able to have some meaningful conversations within it. Um, these 45 minutes go fast. Um, so I'm just gonna share my screen and we'll start the last section of our presentation. All right, so I'll move on to part, we'll move on to part three. Uh, the social emotional aspects of DL, which I think are critical. And I think we all would agree that uh, the human aspect of DL is uh, super important, probably even more so than or we would, you know, really need to focus on that because it's something that can easily be, um, uh, sorry, I'm, <laughs> um, that can, you know, that we really need to work on, right? Especially as DL teachers. So on to the, we're going to talk about the personalization of learning, communication strategies, and differentiations and adaptations. So communication strategies, I'm sure, as you all know, regular communication is super important. I know I'm still working on that more and more every year, just making more phone calls and uh, more sending more emails and just trying to be really in touch with the parents and the students. I find it's always made a difference. Um, and I've had students say, you know, I, I can't really um, get involved in that course right now because it's just in, behind that screen and it's just, I find it hard to relate. So and then one of the students, one last year said, you know, just send me a little knock, knock, who's there message once in a while. And so I did. And then she ended up being one of my best Spanish students who was really involved and in her, she progressed amazingly well, but she really needed that human um, message once in a while, you know, so that. Um, so just really not to, to keep that in mind all the time. And then, of course, having clear learning objectives, expectations, those rubrics I find are um, really useful for, um, and that's another comment I've had for, from students is, you know, in DL, they feel that there's a lot of fairness because they can see that rubric, not that they can't use it in a classroom, of course, but um, I, maybe we use it, we use rubrics more because we 
is just uh, you know straightforward and we instead of explaining the criteria in class so i find um, that's been really useful for students and um, so then in terms of language using the language um, i know amanda has done some research on this and then she's found that um, if you use language on what the students should be doing then that will improve the students time on task. On the other hand, if you talk about the, what other students have done, then it can increase their um, self-learning regulation and their motivation in the course. And I found that if some, with some students or classes that I have, like I'm teaching um, in parallel with um, another teacher on the Atlin Reserve in, the northern, in northern BC, and sometimes I've provided um, examples of other students' work just to um, have a bit extra scaffolding. And that's really been helpful. And then having that social presence. I was at another conference in uh, Toronto uh, last year and uh, they, in the Pepper project that they did in Ontario, um, they were saying using emoticons is um, just adds that little human touch to the messages. So I've been using them. Of course, you have to be careful on how you use them and how much, but um, or how often. But yeah, I think students often uh, relate to that. So having those connections and uh, getting to know them. Like I know um, one of the first tasks that my students do in my language courses, and that was set up by the previous Spanish teacher, was to have them send a message to the teachers talking about themselves and just having that little connection. You know, what's your language background? Tell me a little bit about yourself. So just having that little connection piece is nice. And then so on to differentiation and adaptations. Um, so I was just talking about the Atlin group uh, on the their really tiny little community in northern BC, and uh, I was assuming at the beginning that you know being a DL course they would all have access to the computer and the internet and everything, but I realized you know that wasn't the case. And the teacher said, "Well, it'd be great if you could add uh, printable worksheets or printable vocab." Uh, resources, for example, to the courses so that we can print them and work on those. So I did that. So I realized, okay, well, just because we're in DL doesn't mean that they all have access to um, a computer for each student, for example. So that was uh, interesting to realize for me. And uh, so that's another feature I've added to uh, the courses and uh, creating user groups. So um, for example, in my, actually both my French and Spanish courses for middle school, I have the standard and then I have the enrich. So different, different levels. Gradebook adaptations, of course, I'm sure you all do. Like I had a student this year who has a hearing impairment. So of course, she's not going to do all the dictation exercises in Spanish, you know. Um, and then uh, so providing teacher support and guidance, of course, having um, video and voice use. So you know, Amanda talked a little bit about those, having those intro videos. And I find I want to I've already got, I'm in, embedding YouTube videos, but I also want to create more of my own because I find that uh, students like to have that extra video and voice support in their courses. And then uh, providing scaffolding, of course. So whenever I get student feedback about an assignment, I usually take that into consideration and add more example sentences, for example, or more vocab, or, you know, I really just adapt my, um, my assignments uh, criteria as I go along. And uh, so on to work. So now we're gonna go on to the next breakout room, number three. We've just got a few minutes, so I guess we'll probably keep that one short. Um, and then we'll ask you to share some of the social emotional strategies that you have implemented or that you've heard of that have been helpful in supporting students learning and what were the results. So just got a few minutes, but maybe just share your highlights with each other. And I think Amanda will start the breakout rooms. So Amanda, are you there? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking we'll have to finish this one early because I would really like to do the takeaways at the end so we don't kind of end too abruptly. My dear, thanks. Okay. Sorry, maybe I went yeah. on a bit too much here. That's okay. Um, but, yeah, let's yeah. just make sure we have at least a couple of minutes for them to, you know, do their takeaways in this. We have, yeah. we have a conclusion in the, we'll, in the chat. 
Yeah, we only have about two minutes left. So I agree. Yeah. I think um, maybe, maybe a couple minutes. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then um, just so we have that at the end, right? Yeah, totally. I, it's just, it was, it's, this happens. Um, I think we went a little over in the first one and then that caused. That was the first one. That was my error. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay. No, no, no worries. <laughs> um, we could also just like, yeah, the, like I think what we'll do is like if anyone wants to share some quick takeaways and then um, if they have any questions or if they have instead of them like, yeah, just if you want us, because I think you're talking the rest of it now, you're taking it home. So if yeah, you, it's just gonna be quick. We're not gonna do another, yeah, yeah it'll just be yeah. so I'll just, really basically the takeaways. I think we'll just do that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I don't even think I okay. need to share my um screen for like the share your session takeaways. I think you nope. can just ask and people can uh, just yeah, sure. Sure, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, um, I've got the padlet and then well I'll just uh put the link to the um slides in the chat room too. Okay. I know it's in a doc. The chat box. And um, um, on that document that was shared with us as well. Um, yeah. I'm just going to add, like, have it, like, if you have any questions. Let's close the rooms, though, here, because we've just got a couple minutes left. Yep. Do you want to? Oh, do you want me to? I'll close them, OK? Uh, you got it? OK. Is that OK? Yeah. Do you want to share the Padlet right at the end, though? Or I guess I could share it as well, just to you know, just to look at people's participation and just to say, you know, please refer to it at the end. I don't know if we need to share that. Like they have the link to it. Okay, so that's fine. Go. Sure. Yeah. I'm just being conscientious of the time. Yeah, I know. All right, I think we've got most people back now. So thank you all for sharing. Amanda and I were just chatting about the Padlet here. A lot of people have, have uh, contributed to the Padlets from the different breakout rooms. So thank you so much for doing that. And please refer to it later. Of course, we haven't had time to curate the chat as much as we would have liked to. And um, the resources are really there for to refer to at the end on the Padlet. But what we would like, to, the way we'd like to end this session is for everyone to write their highlights of the session, their takeaways in the chat box. And hopefully we've all learned from each other and inspired, inspired each other. Um, we've really enjoyed your um, participation. So thank you all for joining this session. And if you could take a few seconds to write your the highlights, one or two highlights of the session, what if your discussions in the chat box, that would be fantastic. Thank you, ladies. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you everyone for coming. Okay, thank you. All. Um, yeah. Our emails are there. So if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to ask as well via email or connect with us throughout this conference. I'll be here for the next two days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same here. I got any we've, room. <laughs> we've shared the links to the slides as well as to the, uh, to the Padlet, okay? Great, nice to see. So the student choice, the breakout rooms. Yeah. Great. Thank you all for your feedback and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Bye bye. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.
I was just going to say, Amanda, I was just looking through your master's info thing on the Padlet. It sounds super interesting. I know that was some of the stuff I was looking into and like, yeah, I want to know more about that. So yeah, um, feel free to like, we could connect throughout the next two days if you want to chat more about it or like send me an email. Um, it like, I really enjoyed learning about this stuff and um, yeah, like a full COI wasn't applicable for an asynchronous learning like I have and with like my personal um, school is both adults and school age so you can only ask so much collaboration until it's a little bit inappropriate um, but definitely taking bits and pieces to work and just small things to make a big difference I think really helps so yeah by all yeah. means reach out or we can set up a time and chat more yeah, I always like to see what other people are, <laughs> how they're doing it. So it's good. Yeah. And like none of our DL schools are the same. Like they, we all run so differently. So what works for me isn't necessarily going to work for someone else, I find. And then also just like, um, like we're all experts in like what we do because we're all individualized and like no one teaches the same like few sets of courses. Like I, I, it's just crazy how the variation within DL I find in BC is. Yeah. It's huge. Even, Even in our with, school. Yeah. It was, you took totally. the words right, right out of my mouth, Jen. Yeah. Yeah. Many schools within our school, we have so many different kinds of program, blended programs, fully online programs. And yeah, yeah it's, it's really hard to say there's one overarching yeah. thing that everyone should do that's going to work because it won't. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I even remember when I first started at JDFDL, we um, had it so that there was department heads like a typical high school. And now there's just two department heads and it's like kind of curriculum and resources and tech. And it makes way more sense because literally people were in departments by themselves. Like, yeah. like it's just like we have one math teacher. Yeah. She is like it doesn't make sense for her. Like it does. Yeah. So um but it's just, it, I find DL so interesting. And it's going to be interesting what happens in the next few years. I think a lot of us Definitely. are in, in tomorrow's chat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm going to leave the room, everyone. Okay. I'll let you guys talk to each other. Hi, everyone. everyone. Yeah. I was just looking Bye. at the chat box there. So okay. nice seeing everyone. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. All right. Bye. Lunchtime. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, where's my mic?